Hi, everybody. Welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Tommy, and today I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Angel. Hello. We are back once again covering Guiding Light. Today we're discussing episodes that air between March 6th and March 10th, 1995. So I'll roll the credits, and we'll get right into it. Okay, so I guess we could kind of open the week with um, Matt and Vanessa rushing Peter to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole time I was thinking, where's Bridget? Why are they not contacting the biological mother of this child? Yeah. And then the next episode we saw her and I was like, oh, that's right, because she went to go see Dylan. That's why she's not there. <laughs> I mean, they still should have contacted her anyway, because right. she's a biological mom. Right. So they're worried about him. I don't remember what they said he had. But chicken he had pox. Chicken. Oh, chicken pox. That's right. They didn't mention that. Um, he had a fever. Yeah. Did you ever have chicken pox? Yes. I had them in like first or second grade. Yeah, it was like the summer between first and second grade. I woke up with dots all over me and I showed my grandmother and she thought I was just trying to get out of school. And I'm like, no, I have chicken pox. <laughs> and she sent me to school and then they like called her and I was like, see? <laughs> 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 um, but back to Gagley. Um <laughs> So while that's all going on uh, A woman comes in And says that she fell I think And she like hurt her arm Collarbone and, Oh her collarbone right And Annie and Lillian Lillian yeah I couldn't I was like what is her name I know her face but I'm like the whole time I'm like somebody say her name And I thought I heard Lillian so Okay good um, they're like asking her questions how it happened, and the woman's getting agitated, and she's like, What's with all the questions? She's like, I'm hurt, help me. <laughs> and it was either Lillian or Annie that kind of looked at the door, and we saw like somebody lurking, and they kind of mm-hmm. back. So they kind of got the vibe that maybe she was abused mm-hmm. or she's been abused because she has apparently a record of coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't really sure where they were going with this, and it felt weird because it all, it felt like it was just a scene to set up Lillian remembering that she had been through something similar. Mm-hmm. But that was it. Like, it didn't go anywhere. Like, I wanted to yeah, know more about this woman. I wanted, like, a, a resolution to her, her situation. <laughs> yeah, me too. But who knows? Maybe it'll circle back. I doubt I it. Know. She didn't seem like she was anybody. <laughs> she seemed like she was a day player. Nothing against day players. Good for you. You were on a soap opera. <laughs> Get your sad card. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ed and Eve. Eve, yeah. They are trying to get alone time, but they've been so busy with work and their schedules. Um, and not being on the show as much. Yeah, <laughs> because he's a bower. <laughs> and they're trying to schedule time together, but then Lillian kind of like throws a monkey wrench in that situation by asking him to go speak to the battered woman because he really apparently helped her when she was going through it. Um, Josh and Annie have these cute little scenes. Um, He wants to take her out, but she seems also kind of preoccupied with this woman. That's why I I thought it was going to be a bigger thing than it was. Mm -hmm. And because she was talking to Lillian about how she went through it, in a way, she was getting to know Lillian a little bit better, and she seemed concerned about Lillian. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so she was kind of like preoccupied. Her her mind was all over the place. Peter, this woman, Lillian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Josh is like, let's go out. And she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um eventually she ends up asking him out, mm-hmm. but he has to cancel on her. And all she all he said is I had another D, but he doesn't get to like finish that. And she like slams, like, I guess would be like the on-call room. On call room. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just she goes from zero to like a hundred really quick. Cause mm-hmm. it's a date and she was like slam. She was like, I never should have gotten involved with it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm like so excited for her, her to actually go crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so her and Lillian actually go out to dinner, which I thought was weird because isn't she like a new nurse? Yeah, she's well, she's new, yeah. Yeah, she started in like early like late night 94 yeah and i feel like when josh was hurt after the fire they were kind of like what are you doing in here 
like why are you i don't know i feel like they were questioning her like she was like below them mm -hmm. um and now they're going out to dinner <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> i guess because they bonded over that conversation yeah Right, but it also feels like unethical because, in a way, isn't Lillian would be kind of like her boss or one yeah. of her bosses? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I gotta remember sometimes to like not put real world logic into soap operas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they end up going out to dinner, and I think it was the same Italian restaurant that Josh and her went to. Mm -hmm. And Josh is there, and she's like, Annie's like mortified, and she like wants to get out of there or like before he sees her. Mm -hmm. But then she sees that his date is Mara. <laughs> <His mother>. <laughs> <laughs> so then she feels like a fool. Um, Mara is seems to be trying to play matchmaker. She's like, why don't you invite Andy to come join us? And he's like, no, this is a daddy daughter date. Like we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it's and the reason why she they they're even out is because she wanted the spelling bee. So um. yeah. <laughs> so that was cute. That was um, so cute. There's a board meeting at some point during the week that Josh is at, like a monthly like board meeting and a lunch. And everybody's just talking over each other and Josh mm -hmm. is just like losing his mind and he quits Lewis Oil. <laughs> probably not the first time, probably won't be the last. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, he quits. Um, and nobody's really happy about it. Vanessa's like flipping out about it. Um. I don't know what he's gonna do. Is he's he gonna revert back to, to like revamp Lewis Construction? I thought maybe because like yeah, the, he, that's, yeah. Well, I mean, well, he mentioned that in the episode, so it's not like oh, he did. Weird. Okay, yeah. Because I was thinking about him dressing he, up, showing Annie like what he used to dress up as, mm -hmm. like, really foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, but um, but uh, he tries he hire he tries to hire Matt on to um to the new Lewis Construction, so. Gotcha. At some point, I went down a rabbit hole and I started like Wikipediaing like actors, and, like, <laughs> so I probably wasn't paying attention. <laughs> um, I was specifically um Dinah, the actress that plays her. I started like going down a rabbit hole because <laughs> mm -hmm. I really enjoyed her, even though she annoys me with mm -hmm. her like playing everybody for money. Um, yeah. we'll, <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um. So, oh, I was not prepared. The recast of Eleni. I was not. Even though you told me it was coming, I still... Oh, I told you. <laughs> I know. And you literally said the next episode. But I, I don't know. I just wasn't in the headspace for it to happen so quickly. <laughs> when I heard that the role of Eleni, I was like, what? <laughs> what? And then it happened again. I'm like... Why are you? Why are we doing this again? Like, why are we doing the recast announcement again? Like, I thought that too, and then I was like, well, maybe if people missed yesterday, I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then I, then I realized, and I also realized that, like, um, right before, like the clips that we saw, not the clips, mm -hmm. the episodes that we saw, it's always like something with OJ, something with OJ. So I'm wondering if like, I noticed that. Not... Too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're in the height of OJ right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Also, I always think because we're in 1995, like what Days was doing, and I'm just like, wow, what how different <laughs> the soaps were. Like everybody had their own identity. Um, because we were yeah, in the, just, just we were in the height of the possession at this point. <laughs> 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 um, so we were, oh, so Eleni, so her and Frank are back from Greece. From the looks of everything, it looks like the whole Christos thing is over, but we know better because mm -hmm. of the cliffhanger last week. Um, Nadine and um, Buzz go to see Ross about getting a divorce and they're going over paperwork to see like how complicated it's going to be to see if they own any assets and they don't really except for like a broken luggage I think they said <laughs> <laughs> which makes Buzz get in his feelings because he, feel like, he feels like he wasn't a provider like he wasn't a good right. husband it's it's cute because they're friends and they're both like agreeing to this divorce divorce but they're sad about it and they they don't know how they're gonna break it to the the kids even though they're grown um but when eleni and frank come back um they break it to them and frank kind of reacted like a kid 
like, oh no, my parents are getting divorced. <laughs> Even though, like, he wasn't really raised by them. Because mm -hmm. I remember you said that him and Harley were basically orphaned and they, like, raised themselves pretty much. Yeah. Um, also, something you mentioned that I was like, oh, don't go into it was the whole circus thing with Diana. Because I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she made a comment this week and I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they essentially have a divorce party. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know how to say it, like reversing their wedding vows. Yeah. <laughs> Just to get this. Everybody says something about how great they are as a couple. And like, it's supposed to be like a nice way for them to move on because mm -hmm. they are Nadine specifically is like crying in the kitchen mm -hmm. because she wants the divorce, but she's sad about it. Um, it's really cute. And in my rabbit hole, I definitely went too far and I read some spoilery thing. <laughs> oh, well, here we go. <laughs> Has to do with the horse. Die, die. <laughs> like one well, young Frankenstein. <laughs> uh, yeah. In like maybe like three weeks, things are about to get really crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like just strapping in every week like, uh. <laughs> because things seem really calm right now and i'm like how do we get there so fast mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm like i just don't see how we're doing that but all right <laughs> um so lucy and alan michael oh diana wants to go see alan michael that's where we left left with her she saw mm -hmm. that he is now the president of spalding mm -hmm. my alan michael <laughs> um, and he doesn't recognize her, and I'm like, how long was she gone? Like, how different could she look if she was well, a they both were recast, So, <laughs> well, yeah, but like, I don't know. I feel like you would recognize somebody you went to high school with, especially if you yeah. dated. <laughs> like, well, she was like I... Alan Michael and hugged him, and he's like, "Do I know you?" Like, what? <laughs> well, also, funny. she had her glasses on. She had her, like a sunglasses on, and the hat. Her hair is cut short because I think her hair was long when they were together. Okay. So that that like that I was like okay yeah yeah. Lucy was at the party where she showed up, right? Because Lucy knew. I feel like Lucy knew who she was when I she was she like throwing herself at Alan Michael. <laughs> um. He tells her that he wants her to stay and like biz the business should come before her personal life, and she has to get these contracts like in order for him to sign. And then he like totally flips and he's like bonding with Dinah and she kind of like finagles a dinner out of him. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, well, since you have all this money, you have a company card, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they like trot off to dinner and he doesn't seem worried about business. So Lucy's like, fuck you. I'll do this tomorrow. <laughs> and she goes out to dinner with Brett <laughs> mm -hmm. or dancing with Brett. Was it dinner or dancing? I feel like they went dancing. dancing. Which is how I found out that Tanji not only works for the, the, um, paper but is also a bartender who knew yeah, sure. she's on um, so infrequently who knows what she does <laughs> yeah um, i don't think the writers knew either but <laughs> <laughs> i was like what since when is she a bartender <laughs> yeah because she would have been in the new year's episode right like she was but she was working at the paper covering the fifth street fire yeah and then she was she was with al michael and alan too yeah so she wasn't and that was the bar. I guess she just wasn't working that night. <laughs> yeah, I guess she wasn't working that night. Yeah. <laughs> um, Those margaritas look tasty, though. Oh, my God. I wanted a margarita so bad yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, So Nick comes to see her. And he says that they need her at the paper. But she's like, I I'm working. I can't just, like, leave. Like, mm. we're really busy tonight. Um. And Mindy shows up, and I literally groaned when I saw Mindy. I, I like, and I feel bad because I love Barbara Crampton, but I'm just like, I don't like this version of Mindy. I guess mm -hmm. <laughs> I literally was like, oh, what does she want? <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like staring awkwardly and longingly at, not really longingly, but staring at um Nick. Nick. <laughs> and he goes over there, has a conversation with her. They kind of discuss moving on. Mm -hmm. I always um, do. 
And then she kind of like goes crazy and just starts dancing with everybody. <laughs> yeah. I guess look. the show she's moving on. Like, <laughs> hey, look at me. I'm moving on. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. <laughs> um, just to retract back to Dinah and um Alan, every time she lights a cigarette in a scene, I'm just like, stop. I'm like, it smells so bad and it's rude. <laughs> How many times have people have to tell you, please don't smoke in here? <laughs> I know it's the 90s, but I feel like that was, like, the way the culture was going at the time. <laughs> like, don't yeah. smoke. <laughs> That's like, um, oh, I will. Mm, are we going to get to 2000? Do you know? Are we what? Are we going to get to 2000? I mean, I hope so, because I want to see Bethany Joy Lenz as Michelle. <laughs> okay, good. So there's a character in 2000 that does the exact same thing, and that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that seems weird, even back yeah. then. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who. Oh, so Jilly, we saw Jilly. Um, but we didn't really see her till the end of the week. Yeah. Um, so she's getting ready to go to California to, like, I guess, scope out that job. Mm -hmm. Um, she's talking with her father. Well, before and... that, she's with Roger. Um, and Roger's convincing her not to um go. Right. The, Roger wasn't shown a lot, but the few scenes he had were memorable, kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, um, well, let's finish Jilly first, and then I'll go back to the other scene with him. Um, yeah, because he's like her mentor, right? Like he pretty much like. Yeah. Oh, I went down a rabbit hole with her too. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know she leaves soonish. Because I I wanted to see if this was her exit story. It's not, thank God. Um, <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah, because I know she. Yeah, because I watched the locker room uh, with her and uh, Petronia Paley, who plays uh, Vivian. Uh -huh. um, really good interview. Um, and they said, "Oh, she leaves in '96." I'm like, "Okay, good. Like, this is our storyline." Then, so. Oh, okay. That's how. It, that's yeah, that's what I we haven't released a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, same with um Vincent Irizarry. He also leaves in '96. So. Yeah. For all my, I guess for all my children too. Oh yeah, the both of them. <laughs> yeah. It is funny because I was reading that she went to Passions in two thousand, and I didn't remember her coming on that early. I felt like she came in like two thousand two ish, <laughs> but she was on there like the longest. I feel like because mm -hmm. it said she was on until two thousand seven. I was like, damn. Yeah. Um, so she's talking with her father, and he says that she shouldn't leave before working things out with Sid. And she's like, why do I always have to do that? She's like, why does a woman have to put like her career on hold to like mm -hmm. work things out with a man? She's like, that's not fair. And he admits it's a double standard. Um, Sid kind of has like comes to his senses and he catches her before she goes to the airport. Well, first he cancels the cab. But he shows up with a limo, right? And then he shows up with a limo. <laughs> I was like, are, you, are you like, are you like really that pressed that she has to go to uh, LA and then uh, then turn up? He's in the limo. Like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> they don't really have a resolution, but they kind of get on good terms, and mm -hmm. they kind of just like will take it as it comes and like mm -hmm. work it out somehow. I hope they work it out. I like them. Yeah, I like them too. Um. Who else was there? I'm trying to think of any of like the smaller stuff. Oh, I laughed because uh, Matt and Vanessa were. It looked like they were on a, a lighthouse, and I was like, "Is that yeah. the guiding lighthouse?" lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> they were in the guiding light logo, right? Um, oh, at some point earlier in the week, so Blake is still mad at Ross for giving Dinah a five hundred dollars check. So she's like in bed, but not talking to him, and she's like screaming for him to turn the alarm clock off. <laughs> and then she's like, why do you wake? I'm like, what was the point of you screaming about that if you were just going to stay awake? <laughs> um, so she's basically trying to break through to him about Dinah manipulating him. And on the flip side, Matt is also kind of trying to talk to Vanessa. And they're both getting defensive mm -hmm. and protecting Dinah. Um, even though Dinah doesn't really want anything to do more so with Vanessa. <laughs> she's like blowing her off at every instance like she calls the house and only wants to see the grandfather she's like so let's meet like at a restaurant i don't want to come to the house <laughs> <laughs> um because she found out 
from who did she find out that she had a trust fund? Oh, from her father. From Vanessa's father, I think. Yeah. No, no she from, Ross, from Ross. And then Vanessa's father kind of. Oh, no, Ross. Kinda, no, it was from Ross first. That was last week. And then uh, Vanessa, then she mentioned oh, yeah. Vanessa's father. Uh, right. Or her grandfather. That's and why she wanted to go to lunch because she wanted to find yeah. out like the terms of this. <laughs> and when she was, when he told her, like, you have access to it when you turn 30, and she made it sound like 30 was so old. I was like, hey, I'm like 10 hey. years like, past 30. I would love to have a trust fund right now. <laughs> and then I thought maybe he was going to say, or you have to be married. But that's, that's what really, I was thinking. That too. didn't come up. Um, oh, also on my rabbit hole, I don't know if you know this, you probably do, that she married the actor that plays Hart in real life. Yes. <laughs> they were married. <laughs> They were married for many years. And yeah. I, think, I think they just got divorced. Yeah, like years. recently. Like last few years, I think. Uh, I thought that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, hmm, I wonder if they were the rooting couple. I guess I'll find out eventually. <laughs> well, they leave together. Like Frank Grillo and Winnie Moniz leave together in 99. Oh, they okay. both quit the show. They're like, we're out of here. Bye. <laughs> oh, and they both had pretty substantial careers. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so she finds out that she can't touch until she's 30, and then she's like, is there any way to, like, amend the terms? And that's when he's like, you have to talk to your mother, and she was just like, <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, she shows up, it's like, mommy! <laughs> <laughs> um, but Vanessa kind of calls bullshit on her, and is like, you haven't come to see me, you've been back for, like, a week. And she's like, I've just been so busy, like, running into people, doing things. She's like, it's not that I didn't want to. I just, like, couldn't find the time. And then she's like, Vanessa had a line that was like, I have a bunch of whys. And she and she's like, why are you lying to me? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> um, so Blake is in full PI mode. She's like... I am gonna find out what's going on with this girl. She, I don't trust her. <laughs> she calls the school that she allegedly was attending and finds out that she is not a student there and has not been for two years. And which she would owes be a purple students. violation. Would it be a purple <laughs> violation if this were in in this country? But I'm not sure how that is. It would be a what there. violation? FERPA. See, so you, so you know HIPAA. Uh, yeah. FERPA is the educational variant of that. Oh. Yeah. Even though she said that she was her stepmother? So when you're over a certain age, I believe it's, I think it is 18, you are not allowed to call a college and, and ask, like, what, how your kid is doing. Oh, okay. So, because th that happened with my sister, um, like, they didn't, they said, hey, they, like, my mom was, like, saying, hey, how's she doing? And she's like, we're not allowed to mention that. Oh, Okay. So that happened. That so that's how I knew they're like, oh, I can just go to college and do whatever I want, and nobody would be the wiser. So. <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's interesting. I didn't know that, but that makes sense because I guess technically by law, eighteen, you are considered an adult mm -hmm. in some ways. Yep. Um. Huh. So yeah. So she finds out that she hasn't been a student there for two years, and she still a whole oh, owes <laughs> eight hundred francs. And it sounded yeah. like they were like, would you like to pay that bill now while we have you on the phone? And she was like, click. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what that translates to. Is yeah, I wonder what that too. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's tuition, so it's probably a lot of money. Um, oh, yeah. Duh. So then she decides she's going to go through all her stuff. She goes through like her um, trunk and like it looks like her makeup bag. Mm -hmm. She finds a, um, a plane ticket with an open plane ticket pretty much there's no like return date um does she find something else i don't think she finds anything else no um so now she like is ready to like call her out on all, all of this in front of ross and ross i think makes breakfast for them mm -hmm. and she's like questioning her she's like oh so like what what courses did you sign up for this next semester and dinah's lying making up stuff mm -hmm. And she's like, huh, that's interesting. When do you go back or when do you start? <laughs> and then um, they're cleaning up breakfast and Diana lights a cigarette and mm -hmm. asks um, Blake if she could get her one of those delicious rolls. And I loved that Blake went up to her, grabbed the cigarette and was like, get it yourself. 
<laughs> and she immediately, like, Ross, like, walks in. She immediately is like, oh, I'll, I'll go get that. <laughs> <laughs> so then the mail comes, and Blake opens it, and there's a $900 phone bill. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. She's been back for a week. But remember, she called long distance, too. She did. Well, the so one time that we saw, has she, she complete, has she been doing that consistently? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of spiked the phone bill. You, you, know, you never know when I signed you five phone bills. Nine hundred dollars. That's a lot. Yeah. I don't know. Um. So this like puts her over the edge, and she like is screaming at Diana. And Ross comes in, and she like lays all her shit out and tells her that she has not been in school. Um. She's not a student at the school. And I was like, say for two years, say for two years. And she like she did eventually say. It. I was like, oh thank God. I'm like, because that's important. That's a long time. <laughs> And then Dinah immediately like puts on the waterworks and throws herself at Ross. And it's just like, I had a mental breakdown. <laughs> and Blake is like, oh God. <laughs> so I'm liking this little rivalry. <laughs> um, she says that she was in a relationship with her French tutor who sexually harassed her, but she fell in love with him. <laughs> And then when it ended, she had a mental breakdown. <laughs> and she got sick, and she was in the hospital, and she couldn't afford the bills. And she was living off the tuition money. Mm -hmm. Being in the hospital, she should have been in the hospital longer, but she couldn't afford it. <laughs> and he's buying all of this. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was basically like, oh, she's, there's cer certain elements of this where she's lying. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I think that was pretty much it for that, right? Yeah, there was one element that got like that that kind of weaved into the whole Roger Holly Fletcher thing. I'm not sure if we're gonna get to that or not. There was when she was the trunk when she was with the trunk, and then Holly comes in just as she goes wow. to the trunk. I remember Blake saying, I don't know, she was just kind of like really riled up about Diana. Mm -hmm. And she basically was like, be, be, I don't care, be with Fletcher if it's over you and dad. Like she just kind of like brushed it off because uh -huh. she was dealing with her own shit. <laughs> um, we saw Fletcher fishing with his son, Ben. Ben, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm never going to remember him until he's Matt Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we'll put a pin in that for a second because we had Alexandra come visit Roger and she was flipping out mm -hmm. that Fletcher quit the paper and Roger just seems like carefree, nonchalant. He's like, they want to be together. Let them be together. He thinks like, he like laughs it off. And she's like, this is not the Roger that I know. Like, she's like, you always have something up your sleeve. She's like, you're telling me you're not going to do anything about this. And he's like, <laughs> come to find out he is doing something about this. Because Holly goes to see Fletcher. She's in her little parka. I don't know where they went, if it was out of town to go fishing. It's somewhere out of town. Um, ben lets them have a little bit of alone time. She basically is like, I don't know where this is going to go, but I feel like I love you and I want to try this. And he's like, no. He's like, I'm just going to get hurt in the end. He's like, you always go back to Roger. He's like, your addiction. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, it's not going to happen this time. He's like, I don't believe you. <laughs> you it always happens. <laughs> So they get into a shouting match. A police officer comes in, or security, come to find out that he's reporting back to Roger. So Roger is doing something. Mm -hmm. He's just like playing everybody. <laughs> um, I like them. I do. Fletcher and Holly. <laughs> yeah. I like the comedicness of it and the push and pull. Mm -hmm. um, there are elements that, that we forgot with the Coopers. Um, like, I think the woman that. Um, Buzz was on the phone. What came over? The the all the, the older woman oh, that he was yeah. kind of fooling with. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She came to the diner. Um, <laughs> Nadine's lover. I forgot his name. Oh my gosh, Cutter. I forgot his name. Yeah, no, not Cutter. Um, oh, the, the guy that took her on the date. Yeah, they were talking out after the divorce party, and it was kind of implied that like it he found it a little weird. <laughs> Greg is so 
silly. Every time I'm watching an old soap, I feel like at least five times this has happened. He's like, mm-hmm. Cord, because he used to watch One Life to Live. I'm like, that is not Cord. <laughs> and he's like, yes, it is. And I'm like, I know it's a little pixelated, but that is not Cord. There's a substantial age difference. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, at least five times he's been like, Cord. And I'm like, that's not Cord. Stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he was a T9 Cord fan. <laughs> yeah. Mm, um, also weird. with Lucy, uh, they were at the... Um, the bar. The bar. Yeah, they were at the bar. And um, like it was going well. And then it went cold. And then um, they went back to the diner. He kissed her on the cheek, I think. No, I think it was just a peck on the lips. And then mm-hmm. the next day, she come. Uh, he comes in with flower. Like he, he, she was on the phone with, um, I guess somebody. I, don't, I guess Bridget. I don't know. But um, at the office, and she and uh, she was like, uh, oh yeah, it kind of went cold and stuff like that. And then uh, Brett comes in, yay! And then uh, <laughs> 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 you'll find out why in three weeks. Uh, <laughs> He comes in with flowers and is like, oh, I had a great time. Let's do it again. Because Lucy thought that this wasn't, that there wasn't going to be another date. So. Yeah, when they were at the bar, she kind of like froze when he like mm-hmm. wanted her to dance. And at one point I thought Mindy was dancing with him because she was dancing with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Bridget and David, they went to go see Dylan. Mm-hmm. And she goes first to like see him and she asks the nurse, she says, I'm here to visit a friend. Um, Apparently, it looks like it's like some kind of institution that's helping people with um, sight issues, blindness. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's this like girl working on the computer, and we find out that Dylan has actually been helping her, and she's been helping him with something else. I forgot what it was. Mm-hmm. Cooking. Cooking. Um, I think, and I think he was also constructing too. Yeah. So we found out that he's been like basically building a life there, mm-hmm. helping them out. And that kind of makes Bridget, even though she like loves him, misses him, and wants to see him, she that makes her like kind of pull back and not want to mm-hmm. see him because she doesn't want to disrupt what, anything he has going on there with his recovery. Mm-hmm. Um, so then she goes back to David, and he's like, "Oh, how'd it go?" She's like, "Great," and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go next." And I was like, "Yeah, you go see your boyfriend." <laughs> <laughs> um. And she's like, no, he doesn't really, he's been, he's really busy. And then it, it eventually comes out that she didn't see him and she tells him the truth. I like that friendship a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm really liking Bridget now. I'm glad yeah. she has the angry phase because that was not. <laughs> <laughs> Silly like her and Josh had the same, like, they go from like characters that like, oh, I wasn't familiar with like this. Like he used to keep saying that word, sad sack of character <laughs> that they both were, and now they're just coming out of their shells and not yeah. being as mopey as before. Yeah. Um, you know, so everybody, I mean, Eleni had nothing to do, which you would think there would be more for her to do as a recast, but she seems like. A qualified actress. I was just, it was just very jarring, even though I've only known Alini for two months. <laughs> like, I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> I almost felt like one of those pans. I was like, I will never accept her. <laughs> yeah. And I need to change the opening. When you have a recast, you need to change the opening. Oh, I didn't even think about that because some of yeah, the episodes were so, uh, short <laughs> opening. <laughs> Melina was still in the opening, blowing out the candle. Like, like come on. Well, there's still a lot of characters in that opening that are not on the show. <laughs> I'm like, come on. I mean, like, like, especially with a recast, you should at least like remove them and change and put in like a stock footage or something. Or right. <laughs> um. Oh, I guess this is important. Alan Michael asked Alan Senior to come see him. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot about that too. And apparently, he wanted him to back him up, and Alan wouldn't. Mm-hmm. So they had like this big fight, and <clears throat> the end result is now Alan wants to take over again. <laughs> mm. And I'm like, you were so you wanted your son. He said he gave up the company for love. I'm like, are you talking mm. about Tangi? <laughs> um, he says this to Vanessa, not Vanessa, Alexandra. Um, but now, yeah, so he now it seems like he wants control again, and I'm like, you literally wanted your son to have the position so bad, 
he's been in the position for two months and now you want it back. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, like it, we were in March, you, he got the position in January. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now you're like, no, I want it back. <laughs> no, want it back, want it back. I guess that means he's over Tangy or he's getting over Tangy. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's about to leave soon, I think. Yes. <laughs> I have to go back to all my children. Hey, look, three of them. <laughs> wow. I guess because they're, yeah, they were all New York soaps. They're all New York soaps, yeah. So it's easy for them. <laughs> um, I felt like there was more, but like, I guess not. I think we talked about all the characters that were on this week. Yeah. Is there anything I missed that you wanted to point out? That was the, all, that was all the, yeah, that was all, I mean, Yeah. Still kind of find it weird that there was a recast notice two in two straight episodes. I'm hoping for a third so that way I can get really angry and be like, shut up, we know. <laughs> <laughs> they'll probably do it one more time. At least. Do it, I know they'll do it one more time because she's Melina was a very popular actress in the role, so I'm sure they're gonna have to I feel like it, I feel like at some point they stopped announcing it and they would just like put like the words on the screen. Not on Guiding Light. Guiding Light mean. always had the always had the announcer. Okay. Um, yeah, PNG soaps tend to have announcers. Um All My Children, One Life to Love the ABC soaps had announcers. I think Days One uh Why Nars at some point I know they had a they had the uh screen. Um mm -hmm. but I think Why Nar all for the most part had the announcer. I always get a kick out of this because I feel like they do it just right before the character starts speaking. Like they'll like slip that in right before like the scene actually starts. <laughs> oh my god, will, they find that they perfect. Will, <laughs> they will like direct it so that way um the if like an actor does an action to mm -hmm. leave room for an announcement. Mm -hmm. So like uh so if you notice the first time uh Eleni and Frank were walking in and they had yeah. the announcement. The second time it was a lady is doing some kind she like moved from one she was like walking. Right. And that's when they had the announcement. Uh, I remember a funny instance of this on Passions where they were like where Tabitha goes to answer the door and it's they announce the recast for Fox and she's looking around and she's and then the announcer's like just open the door. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to find that one for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really clever. <laughs> I, I love I, that was my favorite. That's like my favorite instance of that. <laughs> See, passions can be clever sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but all right, if you don't have anything else to add, I guess we can wrap this up. Yep. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Guiding Light. As always, you can find us on all the socials at Queers and Soaps. Until next week, have a great week. Bye. Bye.